I spend a lot of time here on the channel talking about the best PC components to buy or running through my latest PC build. But the biggest question that I get is how you pick the best PC parts for any given use case or budget. Whether you're building a gaming PC for $1,000 or for $5,000, the rules don't change that much. And there are always key mistakes you can avoid in the process. So today, I'll be running through how I go about picking the parts for my builds so you guys can do exactly the same. Let's do this. Corsair IQ Link is a smart component ecosystem that takes your connectivity and RGB to the next level without the cable clutter. You can synchronize and control up to 14 individual devices with just one IQ Link system hub, connecting your devices together with a single cable for power and data. No need to get frustrated with complicated cable management anymore with this easy system that links each device to the next. Buy your IQ Link setup at the first link in the description below. Now let's start off with the basics. There are a fundamental number of components you need to make a working gaming PC build. These obviously include the CPU and GPU, the two most important performance heavy components. But they're obviously not the only parts you need. Every build needs a motherboard where you'll be installing and connecting all of your components together. Every build needs some form of storage, be it a hard drive or more likely a modern NVMe SSD. Every build needs some RAM or some memory so the CPU can store all of the instructions and data that it's currently processing. And of course, you'll need a case to build your gaming PC. And I mean, strictly, you could probably just build the PC out the case, but you'll definitely want a case. And of course, a power supply to provide all of your components with the power. You may also find yourself picking up an aftermarket CPU cooler. The alternative is using the cooler that comes included with your processor. But these are often, and forgive me AMD and Intel, a little bit rubbish. And normally end up tossed in the trash rather than at the front and center of your next build. Now, regardless of how much you spend, whether you're going for a real budget seven, eight hundred dollar build or a top end ten grand gaming PC, these part choices always need to exist. Those seven or eight core components have to be present in order for the PC build to work. But with so many options for all of the parts and different manufacturers and models, how do you go about picking which one is best? Now, the way that I start is with the CPU and GPU combo, first of all. I can give you guys some easy recommendations for budget, mid-range, and higher builds, but as a rule of thumb, my CPU and GPU combos tend to take up about half of the build budget. Sometimes it might even be more than this, especially on, say, a high-end build where you've already got a great CPU and motherboard and can pour all of the extra cash into the GPU. While those shopping for a real budget system, will only be able to save so much on the other parts, which may make that 50% threshold a little bit more difficult to hit. These combos can range from anything such as a Ryzen 9 7950X, a top-end CPU with an RTX 4090, a top-end GPU, to something more modest like a 7800 XT graphics card and a Ryzen 5 7600X, something that will set you back about $750 all told. Well, there's also great budget options out there too. Say you pick up the Radeon 6600 and a last-gen Ryzen 5 50 600X. That's going to set you back $350 or $400 for those shopping on a budget. There's loads of resources where you can pick the best CPU and GPU combo. This is always what I would nail down first. A couple of pointers here. CPU, you want something with decent core counts, decent thread counts, but for gaming, clock speed is arguably more important. If you're building a gaming PC, you can also pick up a CPU that doesn't have integrated graphics. That's anything on the Intel range with the letter F, as we'll be using the dedicated GPU instead. The reason picking these two parts makes a lot of sense early is because you can easily estimate the kind of performance that your build will achieve but also it has a knock-on effect on the other components the motherboard that you pick for example is directly tied to the cpu so let's take the cpu combo the mid-range ryzen 5 combo as our example because it's an am5 ryzen 7000 cpu we'll need to buy ourselves an am5 motherboard now this combo will set you back about 750 dollars and in a 1500 dollars build where the 50 percent rule works perfectly that leaves us about $750 for all the other components. When you're picking a motherboard, you basically decide on the chipset first of all. AMD AM5 boards come in the A620, B650, and X670 chipsets, while Intel motherboards go from the lower end H series through to the B760 and Z790 chipsets. The higher end the chipset, the more features and connectivity and BAM 
bandwidth you have, for example, Intel's Z chipset boards are the only ones which support overclocking. While on the AMD side, you get overclocking on the B and X lineup, but not on the cheapest A620 boards. With about $750 then for our remaining five or six components, what would I recommend? I think for a mid-range build, a B650 motherboard will be better. So I'm gonna go onto here and search for a B650 design. Now, a couple of good options. You can see there's one here for 125, another one for 140. There's loads and loads of choices in that 100 to 200 dollars region. I like the look of this ASRock board. It's a bit more bare bones, but it comes with Wi-Fi included, which is really important. When picking up a motherboard, it's easy to then start whittling down your available options. Pick the socket, pick the chipset, and then look for certain features. Do you want it to be micro ATX? Do you want it to be bigger? Do you want it to have four or two RAM DIMM slots? Do you want Wi-Fi? I'm going to go for this one. So I'm going to add that to my cart, which is $124. While I'm here, I'm also going to go ahead and add in the CPU and GPU combo, which, as we mentioned earlier, was the Ryzen 5 7600X and the RX 7800 XT. So let's load the 7800 XT up. 499 for this ASRock card. Let's go slightly higher end, maybe this Sapphire Pulse card for 520. And you can see that we're sitting at about $890 with a few rebates to come off. Once you've picked the motherboard, you're then able to pick the memory because the motherboard will determine whether you want DDR4 or DDR5. I'm going to keep this bit really easy. Want to know how to pick RAM? Spending less than $1,000, get 16 gigs. Spending more than $1,000, get 32. So all I need to do now is find 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. I'd like a bit of RGB because aesthetics are my vibe and I don't want to spend much more than $110. G-Skill Trident, 6,000 megahertz. What's the latency? It is cast latency 36. So it's pretty snippy, pretty good. And I've used this RAM before, been impressed with it. Another $5 off, that's going straight in the basket. Another easy component to pick off is the SSD. And you can see hopefully what I'm doing here. The components that are easier to pick, we can do first first because that then leaves a certain amount of budget left over at the end for all the bits that are a little bit more subjective. I know that I want NVMe storage and I'll again make an easy recommendation here. If you want to go ahead and pick up storage for your build, spending less than $1,000, get a one terabyte budget to mid-range NVMe. Spending more than $1,000, get a one or two terabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive. $2,000 here, so I think we can do a two terabyte NVMe and we want it to be PCI Gen 4. PCI Gen 3 drives top out at three gigs a second. PCI Gen 4, about seven or eight. PCI Gen 5 is newer and a bit overkill for anything other than a high-end build and tops out at about 14 to 15. Now, Silicon Power are a pretty record brand they've got one here for $77 it's two terabytes equally for $69 you can get something from Crucial which is a slightly better known brand with only one terabyte of storage I think I'm going to go for the silicon power kit though just by way of example but you can also see that as we scroll down the line WD Black have got a two terabyte for 129 Corsair's MP600 Core XT without the heatsink is 94 the silicon power drive is going to work well for me though and as I say we're splitting hairs here a little bit a two terabyte NVMe is I know what I want for this build and what I'd recommend. So it's easy to add in. And you can see straight away how much money have we got left. We've spent $1,052 so far, which means for our $1,500 budget, we've got about $500 left, leaving just three core components left to go. The case, the cooler, and the power supply. Power supply is another easy one to decipher. It might look difficult with different ratings, different wattages, different brands, but it's actually really simple. Head over to the GPU manufacturer's website. So I'm gonna go onto Google and search RX 7800 XT PSU requirements. Now what manufacturer will do is now set out a requirement for how much power the card typically needs. So according to this here on the AMD own page, specifications, board power is 263 watts. Minimum PSU recommendation is 700. Now you don't always want to go for the minimum. And obviously if you've got a high-end CPU, you want to do some overclocking, you need to spend a bit more money. So let's look at what the 750 watt options are on Newegg. Now I know that 750 watts we can do that for under a hundred dollars rm 750e from corsair at 99 is very 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 attractive asus tough gaming at 99 as well thermal take at 89 but you can see here there really is a plethora of options i quite like the corsair unit it's compact it's got good reviews and it can go straight in my cart you can see now that we're sitting at about 1177 dollars left so we've got the cooler and the case to go as far as the cooler goes i think that this is another area i can make some quite simple recommendations Spending under $1,000, get a 
tower air cooler, something like the Deepcool AK400 or Cooler Master 212 RGB. Then in between 1000 and 1500, try and squeeze in a 240mm all-in-one if you can, something like the Deepcool LS520, MSI MAG 240R is also a good choice, but a high-end air cooler will also be fine depending on the CPU. Ryzen 5s and i5s, good for an air cooler, Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9, an i7 and i9 on the Intel side will need something liquid and a bit more beefy. Spending $2,000 or more, go for a 360mm RAD. There's loads of great options out there. I want to go for a 240mm all-in-one though, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a liquid cooler up, following my general rule here as far as options go. Deepcool LS520 88, great deal. Corsair have even got a unit for 99. As I say, I quite like a bit of RGB, so a bit of RGB is not going to hurt. That Core Liquid 240R I referenced earlier at $99 as well. Now, Now's a good time to pick out the kind of color scheme and aesthetic too, as that will inform your cooler choice. I'm going to definitely add in the LS520 to my build, putting us at $1,266 so far. Now, PC cases is where things get super subjective. I've put together a video on my favorite cases that you can buy, but it's changing all the time with so many new options. A budget build under $1,000 should be able to get a case for about 60 to 85. Mid-range build, you should be able to find a case for 99 to 120, while high-end build, you can go mad on the case. You can spend 180, 200, 300. You can spend even more on a chassis and it depends what kind of features you want. Looking here, Antic have got one for 99. That looks pretty good. Height-wise, 60 is awesome, but too expensive for this build at 189. Lee and Lee Lancool, lovely case for 99. Fantex Eclipse, 99. For that $99 price tag, there are so many options out there from brands I have heard of and brands I have not heard of. Let's keep going though. Let's see what else we've got. The new Cooler Master Cube 500. We've looked at that. I wouldn't quite say that's worth $99. Corsair 4000D, 5000D. You can see there are just plenty and plenty and plenty of choices to be had here, but nothing's quite taken my fancy just yet. I'll rejoin you in a minute when I've picked some. You know what? Let's go for a classic. Fantex Eclipse. It's got $10 off with the rebate, taking it down to $89 US dollars. And that is all the parts. I was aiming for $1,500, and here you can see the rules don't necessarily always work out. I said 50% of the budget would be good for the CPU and GPU combo. And I'm at $1,300, meaning that I can definitely afford to spend more than 50% of the build budget on a good CPU and GPU. Before doing that though, identify if there's any weak points in your build and look through all of your choices. Now, if I take a little bit of a browse, maybe the SSD could do with a bit of an upgrade, but it's also a great place to save cash. The CPU call is perfectly adequate for what we need, and so is the memory, so no changes needed there. CPU and GPU, I've already mentioned, that's where we want to focus the budget if we can. The power supply is going to be fine, even if we upgrade the GPU a little bit. The motherboard, though, does stand out to me as something that perhaps could be a little bit better. Now, I don't want to waste all the budget on going crazy with the motherboard, but I think we can do something that is full-size ATX rather than micro ATX, has Wi-Fi, better overclocking. So let's go on to B650, sort by the best selling, and have a scroll. So Gigabyte, I've got one here. Gaming X AX with Wi-Fi, better aesthetic, better form factor 189. Ace is tough over 200. I don't really want to spend that. MSI I've gotten for 179 as well. That's really nice from MSI at 250, the edge, but out of our budget. Aorus Elite. Micro ATX would be okay, but I'd like a full-size ATX board. Hmm. I'm thinking that Gigabyte board from earlier, 189, is going to be a better option. We have more experience with Gigabyte boards, which leads me to lean that way, in this instance, for slightly better connectivity and features. Now that takes me up to $1,431, meaning there's about 70 left in the budget. Where do we want to spend this money? Well, I think that we could notch the CPU up to maybe the Ryzen 7, but it's a gaming build and I don't really think we need to do that. So instead, I'm going to take the GPU out and then try and spend about $650 or so on the card. Now, I think that's probably going to leave us still with the 7800 XT as the best option. The 4070 costs more money, but it's not necessarily worth it. And that's another thing to bear in mind when determining how to pick PC parts. Don't necessarily just presume that the higher the number, the better the component. I'll pop our latest GPU tier list on your screen now so you can see how we rank all of the GPUs currently available on the market. This Sapphire Nitro design is certainly much better though compared to the option that we had in the cart previously. So let's add that one in and see where we land. Taking a look here, we land at $1,471. Now, is that a worthy upgrade? I think it is. Is it going to give you necessarily 20% more performance? Not necessarily. And that's why an arbitrary budget like $1,500 doesn't always make a lot of sense. You might be thinking as well at this stage, well, how much do I actually need to spend to achieve the performance 
what I want. Another general rule of thumb, less than $1,000 is going to give you 1080p performance and pretty good 1080p performance at that. 1440p gamers will need to spend more like $1,500 for a card like the 7800 XT, while those gaming at 4K should spend considerably more and get a 7900 XTX, 4080 or 4090. That's only really attainable in a $2,500 build upwards, depending on which one of those cards that you pick. Try and spend about 50% of your budget on your CPU and GPU, let the processor inform your motherboard choice, let that inform your RAM and SSD choices, and divvy up the remaining budget for a good value case, cooler, and power supply. Got some money left at the end? Better GPU. Why the hell not? If you enjoyed this video, get subscribed, drop a like rating, put a comment in that says, yeah, this was awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, bye!